If you want it, they got it. Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. I'm Rob Bear, and today we're showing you all the cool new accessories for the big Age of Sigmar 2.0 Second Edition release. It's summertime, we got new Sigmars, and of course, you gotta get all the accessories. So, coming in hot this release weekend is uh, all sorts of different things. We got objectives, Shattered Domain, Dominion objectives right here. This is a uh, box set, $35 US. We'll take, obviously, we're going to take a closer look at all of these. You got the wound counters dice set. I actually like these. I was playing with them earlier. $12.50 for these bad boys here, 20 dice. Then the steel combat gauge is back. This one's cheaper than the first one, the original year. This is only $15. Two different pots of night haunt, of new technical paint. You got night haunt gloom and hex wraith flame both of these going for 750 which isn't anything new for that size of uh, pot of paint then the scenery dice which i mm, might be my favorite out of all of these 20 dollars for this set and the command and status dice 20 dollars as well right there and of course they come in the, the new little flip top format so let's jump let's pick one and dive right in sometimes you just gotta start with the biggest one first so here is the shattered dominion objectives now these are seven different objectives in here 26 different components on sprue this this is once again the chinese you know harder plastic less detail kind of thing but you know they are getting better in the detail work over the the stuff they put out three years ago originally for age of sigmar supposedly you can use these to represent objectives in age of sigmar instead of you know like a dice or a poker chip or something like that and you know you get to paint them up and, and model them and stuff but you know practically why why i think they look great and they make great parts for dioramas and different scenery you know i think when we're already painting up all our endless spells and stuff it might be a little far reaching but then again i you know these things i i'm not the market researcher so i can't say obviously games workshop has hard data on these things and if they sell or if they don't sell but here's all the components like i said it actually looks like a lot more than what's on the box right so you can see here you've got now each of these are called something uh different like this is the iconoclast axe somewhere they're supposed to oh there it is probably right there the axe that's into it yep yeah, there it is right there the realm's ransom which is all of this uh cool looking kind of treasure type type stuff right here trove of arcane glory apparently has an open top format. There it is right there, and I guess that top goes on there. There's, yeah, that's the gold, so that's the Realm's Ransom, that's the Arcane Glory. Oh, there it is right there, that's the side probably. And the Hollowed Tomb is this one right here. Soul Stone is the large three pieces in the chain right there. And then the Ensorcelled Armory, which is the rest of the pile of this stuff right here. Actually, there's Oh, the Realm Vault key, which is this, this, and this little base right here. So they don't come with bases, but they do have, you know, like I said, better detail than what we've seen in the past, but they're still not the most uh, detailed it is compared to multi-part kits and such right here. You can definitely see they're pretty well detailed. I mean, you can see each individual little coin right there and all the studs and everything. So they are getting better and better. I think this is probably some of the most detailed stuff we've seen uh, come out of China and of course packaged and distributed out of the, the UK there by G-Dub. And then there's the other one with all the goodies on it. Yeah, I'm gonna say this is this is a win. These are, these are pretty cool. How much is this, 35? Pretty neat. I definitely like this one. I think it's uh, I think it's a value, but then again, you know, like I said, we're already painting up so much stuff. How much more do we want to paint to get our models on the table? Y'all know how I feel about my game aids. I love me some tabletop reference material, game aids, whatever it is. If it's the stuff that comes in the Malign Sorcery, the little War Scroll cards, and this is the new size, of course, with the ones in the Soul Wars box, or be it a piece of steel here with all the necessary measurements you need. And look at that. This thing is, oh, I need something else metal to knock it up against, but... There you go. Now you know. Now you know. Genuine steel, right? Uh, so it is a kind of the same style as the combat gauge that came out when Age of Sigmar first 
uh, Bebop its way around about three years ago. It's not $30, it doesn't have a piece of you know, a leather strap on top of it or attached to it or anything like that. But it still is very convenient. You can throw this in your dice bag and probably not not worry about it getting destroyed or anything like that. Whereas with some of those acrylic templates and stuff, I've had a few break on me and it was disappointing. It wasn't, you know, as much as this, but I could definitely see where sometimes stuff like that is disappointing. So it's got all the necessary measurements you're gonna need. Remember, you gotta be within a half an inch for combat your three inch, your coherencies, your one inch, or your pylons and stuff. So this is definitely a win in my book and being steel, it almost looks like it's acid edged. I wonder if it is, I'll have to look that one up and see what the what process they used to make this. But either way, I'm definitely a fan. And then we're down to the dice. Everybody loves dice. You never have too many dice. So the two sets of dice, $20 and the wound counter dice are $12.50. Now, the, we're going to save the senior dice for last because I like those the most. So the command and status dice are, are pretty interesting. They've come, they say these are for your command points. So you're going to get like, you know, half a grip of dice here. They don't have any symbols on the one or the two. You can still roll them. They feel, you know, they feel pretty good. I, I don't, they, they seem like they roll and they don't wobble. You don't have to worry about any of that. Uh, and then over here, you're going to have the die that represents different commands and such. Like you've got Mystic Shield, which I guess is that one. Uh, Run, which I guess would be that one. Charge, I guess that one. Hidden, maybe that one. And Inspired, uh, what's left? Inspired, <laughs> there you go right there. So there's your big six. Now, I don't know, I, I never really marked any of that stuff, I guess. I, I guess Inspired would be good to know so you don't have to take Battle Shock or anything like that. But um, maybe I've been effing up not marking them. I'm more worried about marking what's attacked than some of the status and stuff. But it's a cool, neat little set. Maybe I haven't played my first game of 2.0 yet. So perhaps this is something you need. But I just really can't speak to that uh, quite yet. But then again, they are pretty cool looking dice. Not my favorite. But I do uh, respect them and the fact that they, they seem pretty solid design and they roll just fine. So there you go. Now these wound counters, I like this. This is a, this is a neat little idea. We've seen these before in 40k and there was all different all different colors and sizes and things and it was just kind of silly. But look at this. This is a D10, right? But it's kind of designed to, to mash flat and kind of stay, of course, you know, my base. The, the surface here isn't exactly flat because it's got some texture and stuff on it underneath. But either way, so this is designed inherently to stay flat. And they don't seem, they seem to wobble like when you roll them. So I'm not sure that this would be a good idea for something to roll. It doesn't seem like it might roll average um, because it always seems to roll on kind of like an in-between. You see it when it wobbles right there. It might not be balanced right is all I'm saying. Uh, or maybe it just appears that way because it balances on that little fulcrum right there. Either way, they're neat. They seem like they would stay put uh, for the most part. They seem like a good size. So I kind of like them and I like the fact that there's a blue and, you know, uh, white so you can use them as tens and ones so you don't have to you know just stay standard like these are my these are my tens these are my ones and you never have to worry about it right there and then last but certainly not least are the scenery dice and the scenery dice are cool these are my favorite like i said uh they got these really cool designs on them which you know i was like man those look really familiar where have i seen this before <laughs> um i like the little kind of model texture here that's, uh, you, you see stuff like this, I think they're called Ninja from Chessex, I wanna say. So it's a it's a neat little pattern that I think really, maybe this or in blue would be would be two different really cool uh, looking designs. So I really like the design, just something about them really pops. And then they've got these symbols on them, but they also have, this is also D6s, so they're kinda dual purpose. And they feel a lot stronger, a lot sturdier than those other dice, and they, they seem to roll Pretty decent for the most part right there. Literally one, one, two, three, six, right? So they're pretty neat, but they serve a, a dual function as well. Because if you open up to your main rule book on page 235, you will notice that, look, hey, there's a scenery table. Uh, so it tells you all the different types of scenery that you're supposed to roll for when you play uh, your games Age of Sigmar. Now, I'll be honest, I played a lot of Age of Sigmar and I always forget. <laughs> So maybe if I have these dice now, I'll actually remember, or maybe I'll just only use them to roll and then remember after I first start rolling. But I feel like if you have these dice and you're rolling these dice from the get-go, you'll remember uh, to mark your scenery, right? But what do I know? 
uh, I do things differently sometimes. But either way, solid design, and I really like uh, the heft to them as well. Now we got to our hobby section of this review and unboxing, which I'm stoked for. So we've got the Night Haunt Gloom and the Hex Wraith Flame here, and they are definitely liquidy. Now they might be incorrectly marked here on the on the back. 24 milliliters is not 0.4 fluid ounces. I believe it's 0.8, but I could be wrong. Um, but somebody fact check me on that. I think that may be incorrect. However, it is the tall pot. You can get some 3D printed uh, little holders like this on Thingiverse so you don't knock over, you know, your uh, your $8, $7.5 bottles of technical paint there. And you can see it is definitely liquidy. So we're going to enlist the help of, and that is definitely liquidy as well. We're going to enlist the help of two of our little chain duders here from the Soul Wars box set. We got them primed up. And what I want to do here is lay this on really thick at first. Let me grab me a uh, technical brush here. I wanna lay it on really thick and grab our, what is this, our bomb wick, our large bomb wick, and see how that looks. So first up, we're gonna use the Hex Wraith Flame here. And I like these wedge brushes, um, just because when I'm doing washes and such, it seems that it gives me better control. Now I know that's, Probably goes against the grain of what, you know, conventional wisdom says and GW says, but that's just kind of where I'm at on this. So let's put it on really thick just over this little flame right here and see how it looks and see if we need to water this down. It doesn't look like we do. So that's pretty neat. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay. So now we can see a little bit more detail. So let's throw a second coat on there. It dried a little while else adjusting the camera it doesn't seem uh very hard to work with at all it's going to pull at the bottom so you want to make sure you dab it off and get your glip glops and your klingons but i'm pretty happy with that that's kind of crazy i'm going to go ahead and coat the whole model in it just to see how it works and if it streaks or anything if we get any coffee standing over the whole model Ooh, spooky. This thing is uh this thing's pretty neat. I really like this uh this glow here. Now I'm not exactly sure it's coming through um the camera quite as much as it's uh as it actually looks here. Let me look up the camera. The camera looks good, but my readout does not. So uh we'll check it in post. Hopefully it looks a little translucent over the white. Now what I like the reason I like using these chisel brushes here is the fact that it pulls it all down and you can single-handedly kind of pull it like this and get all the glit clops and things off by keeping it moist you know rinsing your brush off and then dabbing it back to go to grab anything that's a little too much but then you can put it back too kind of across there just like i did and allowed uh the white edge to sh kind of shine through uh true right there so it looks like for the most part this is starting to dry out don't have much time to work with it here but i'm pretty happy with uh how this uh this material works like this is kind of cool i'm uh, i'm definitely digging the potential here with uh, a lot of different things so let's throw on the night haunt gloom and see what that looks like okay done with that one right there and i am definitely impressed with this stuff too now Quick caveat, this is super thicker than the Hex Ray Flame. Uh, you're gonna need to cut, make sure you're rinsing your brush off, because all I did was just kind of go back and pull it all off of here, um, but still left the liquid from just rinsing my brush off on the bristles itself. So I'm just kind of pulling and it's it's pulling it back off the, the surfaces and getting into the cracks and such. It looks like, you know, right here, I might've pulled too far, but you can see where I pulled uh, right here in those couple of spots. So I'm just gonna try to grab some and put some back in there Just like that a little bit so you can kind of see that there this brush holds a lot of fluid in its in Its bristles there, but it gives you an idea of uh, kind of how it all should work now Something that dawned on me while I was doing this it would be pretty cool to just do the capes in the night haunt and then maybe the flames and stuff and the hex wraith maybe and uh, you know, work on maybe some bright colors, like hitting the chains with some bright colors and stuff like that. 
uh, waiting for this to dry and then giving it a really light dry brush over top would probably uh, pop it a little bit too. But um, I'm very, very impressed with this. It's great just to get your stuff on the tabletop and, and look good. But you know, in the long run, you're still gonna need a little to do a little bit of work, a little bit of detail work perhaps uh, to really kind of take it to that next level. But getting your stuff to the tabletop, I mean, this is very, very easy right there. So uh, definitely impressed with these new technicals, 100% uh, for sure. This is going to allow you to get your stuff on the tabletop definitely a lot faster. So there it is. All the things you need to paint and play faster in Age of Sigmar 2.0 Second Edition. If you like these kind of videos, make sure you work out those hobby muscles, hit that subscribe button, and Turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our new videos.